right, we're getting going here. Stream's getting loaded. <clears throat> Give it just a second here. Looks like extreme health is good and uh, we're ready to go. playing my uh, air hockey salon uh, intro music. I was trying to get it queued up at the start. There it goes. So welcome to uh, my vlog live stream for 718 2017. Uh, feel free to throw out any uh, questions or anything on Twitter at Nels Lindahl. It's available right there. So we're gonna shoot through, again, some content uh, from Twitter that I've looked at over the last day or so. Um, some links that I found entertaining, some topics that I wanted to cover. Um, I moved the webcam just a little bit over and uh, done some uh, movement here on the microphone. Um, yesterday I accidentally got the uh, boom arm of the microphone in the shot, my bad. So today, we're working to improve that. All right, so got the uh, quadrants of doing up, a tool for daily reflection. I got that tweet still pinned. I'm still enjoying it every day. One of the articles I looked at that I was really pleased with was some customer data meets AI from the MIT Technology Review. A new day is dawning for customer experience driven by application of artificial intelligence machine learning and automated technologies. It's a, it's a great piece. Um, you can check it out here. It's actually, it's written in partnership with Salesforce. Um, Salesforce is definitely providing some interesting uh, CRM and other components. Uh, you can see here they're putting in, uh, you know, a whole bunch of information here that uh, AI startups received more than 5 billion in venture capital funding in 2016. According to CB Insights and IDC projects, that worldwide revenue from Cognitive Systems and AI will reach 47 billion by 2020. So uh, that's pretty interesting. They're pulling in a, a ton of different information about how uh, customer data is being impacted by artificial intelligence and how folks are looking to, you know, beat the competition using big data. So, um, and embedding AI into CRM, which makes total sense because a high quality CRM is going to have a huge amount of data and it's going to pull together a bunch of data from the workflow. And I think that's really key to being able to um, take the information and translate it into meaningful actions to really understand the customer journey. Because the CRM is going to have that workflow, it's going to have that customer journey, then you're laying in data and analytics across it. And I think that's where you're really going to see a lot of the power that big data has to help um, drive decision points to help drive actions along the way to help find uh, models of information and help uh, move things forward. So I think uh, when you get a chance, check out this article here. It's a great article. Um, really enjoyed it from the MIT Technology Review. I think one of the things that uh, you always get into uh, when talking about um, the artificial intelligence space uh, is uh, what exactly is that? And so Seeking Alpha who um, periodically produce some uh, great reads. Um, definitely something that uh, I check out from time to time. The uh, MIT Technology Review, obviously gonna build quality things, gonna produce quality things, gonna produce quality information uh, to consume. Seeking Alpha, definitely not rising to the uh, MIT Technology Review level, but they definitely produce some, uh, some in-depth pieces from time to time. This one here, uh, I'm just pulling in some different things here. They're just talking about, you know, artificial intelligence is a concept of machines accomplishing tasks which have historically required human intelligence. Okay. 
um, focused on machine learning. In simple terms, machine learning is a process of building machines which can access data, apply algorithms to this data, and, and train themselves. So it's interesting, right? Um, and deep learning, they have some other stuff on deep learning here. Um, AI is, is just going to be a framework, right? So if you can set up a set of definable and repeatable things where you're going to try to get some insights, try to learn some, some things as you go, you can build a, an artificial intelligence framework to take in and consume those things. You know, when you get down to machine learning, you're talking about it's not about a set of definable and repeatable things. It's about taking a set of data. It's about applying it across that set of definable and repeatable things. Or maybe it's unstructured data. It could be the machine learning and some unstructured data. Um, but you're trying to take and build models to move forward. Um, deep learning, I think, is uh, something that they look at here is deep learning takes artificial intelligence a step further by mimicking how the human brain works. Uh oh. Looks like uh, I reached my seeking alpha limit. I'll have to register later to finish reading that article. So, uh, accidentally posted a uh, video quality bitrate test yesterday. I was just testing to see the stream, if I could get it up to 4K um, on YouTube and just increasing the overall stream uh, capacity. Um, to get 60 frames a second and stream 4K, which the test was absolutely successful. Worked great, bandwidth worked okay. Um, so, to look at this tweet here, you know, progress is won and lost with every generation, which I think is completely true. We always open the door to more knowledge, and that knowledge helps us take a step forward, right? Um, it's, you know, we, we, we work and we stand on the shoulders of giants, right? All the foundation and layers of theory, all the idea that you bring forward in the academy, that's the nature of how folks bring things together. And I think uh, something that I always appreciate. So Elon Musk, who uh, is always an interesting individual and always putting forward interesting things in interviews. Um, I read this article from The Verge. Um, the Verge was a Josh Topolsky effort um, and they're kind of a echo, kind of a shadow of, uh, you know, the humor, the edge, the things that Josh Topolsky brought um, to that website. And um, they kind of just got stuck there. Uh, but they read some good in-depth stuff. Um, this uh, look here at Elon Musk saying we need to regulate AI before it becomes a danger, right? Um, I think it's, a, it's definitely something that, you know, instead of asking for regulation after the fact, he's looking to regulate and asking Congress to go ahead and regulate AI up front. So it's a good topic for conversation. It's a good thing um, for government to understand where we would put in regulation or how you want to regulate. Um, definitely um, certain industries, you know, healthcare, business, stock trading, all kinds of things could regulate AI. So I don't know if we'll end up with an overall policy, but Definitely something that could be regulated. So we see here that 76% of tech leaders will increase hiring for AI. Cognitive Solutions reports. Um, Joni waved hello. So 76% uh, of tech leaders will increase hiring for AI. So I think it's a really good article from the Tech Republic here looking at just where that hiring will be. So if you're interested in uh, you know where the jobs will be or as uh, you know, Wayne Gretzky always said, being where the puck will be, not where the puck is. Um, I think the 76% of hiring uh, is kind of giving a good look at that. Another look at uh, an article from evolutionnews.org, which is uh, not an establishment that I read very often, but I sort of enjoyed this read, um, where astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson was taking a look at whether or not we all live uh, within a giant computer simulation which is an idea that Elon Musk, um, again, has brought forward. Um, I think it's a, it's a very interesting read. And let's see if I can get back to it here. The reason I...